you ever been shading your artwork in Illustrator and flat shading or gradient shading is just not cutting it, you want something a little bit more interesting? Well, I'm gonna go over three different alternative shading styles or kind of comic booky shading styles that you can do directly within Illustrator with no need for any external textures or anything like that or plugins. You can do all of this within Illustrator itself with the built-in tools. First thing we need to do is select the areas we want shaded and add gradients to them. We are going to be using black to white gradients for obviously our shadows and highlights. I'm going to add gradients to all of my shading areas. You can use any of them. If you want to use the mesh gradient tool, you can. Freeform gradient, radial gradient, normal linear gradient, all of them work. Just make sure your shadows are completely black and wherever you'd like it to disperse to becomes white. The first of the shading styles I'm going to be going over is a pixelated halftone. Once you're done adding your gradients, select each shape, go to my appearance panel, click this little FX down here and click on the word rasterize. I'm going to swap it from CMYK to bitmap and then I'm going to go down to other. For larger pixels, you want to make this number smaller. For smaller pixels, you want to make this number larger. I'm going to start with 25. And now you have pixels shading your artwork. If you would like to adjust the size of your pixels, you can adjust it here. I'm going to up mine to 30. So now you can see the pixels are a bit smaller. If you'd like your pixels to blend in a bit more with the color of your artwork, you can always adjust the opacity and the blending mode. I am going to go into my appearance panel. By default, if I lower the opacity right here, it's going to kind of appear a little bit gray. But but if I swap this over to multiply and lower the opacity, it should blend in a bit more naturally. And so this is kind of that pixelated dithering look that you could go for if you'd like, kind of like a pixel half tone effect. Um, I'm going to now move this over to the side and do the next set of shading to the same Muffin Man and we can compare all of them at the end. The next shading technique I'm going to be doing is pretty similar, but instead of pixels, we're going to be going with circles or dots. So it's going to be standard halftones. So these are often used in like comic books, old style printing. It gives you another kind of retro look, but a little bit less digital. I'm also going to start with gradients. So I'm actually just going to remove the rasterization effect in my appearance panel, as well as bring the opacity back to default and then apply the next halftone effect that we're going to be doing from there. Now with the gradients all set up, I'm going to select all the shapes to apply my effect to. In the appearance panel, I'm going to go to this little FX down at the bottom and under Photoshop effect, I'm going to go down to pixelate and I'm going to select color halftone. It's going to pop up this little window right here and first thing we want to do is make sure that all of our channels have the same number this will make sure that our dots are pure black next we're gonna set the max radius the bigger this number is the bigger your circles are going to start at the darkest point I'm gonna start with 30 and see how that looks I actually really like the size of those but as you can see they are going from black to white and covering all the artwork so the next step is to go back into the appearance panel click on opacity and go down to multiply right here. Once that is selected, it will get rid of all of the white and leave you with just your pretty dots. Now that the white's gone, if you've decided you do want to change the size of your dots, you can always come back into the appearance panel, click color halftone, and either raise or lower this number. I'm going to lower it a little bit to make the dots start a little bit smaller at 25. So I actually quite like how this is looking at 25. I think that looks a little bit better than the 30. So I'm just going to go ahead and select him and bring him over next to our pixelated guy and zoom in here. And now you can compare the two vintage shading styles and you can come in and adjust the density and all that stuff whenever you want within the appearance panel. So it's really adjustable and super easy to do. Okay, for this next shading style, I'm actually gonna go back into my shape. This time I'm gonna be using the shadows as clipping masks on top of the shading that we will be doing. I'm also going to turn off the gradient on all of these just to make them a little easier to see since I'm gonna be using them as a clipping mask. I want to add some shading to his legs. So what I've done is I've isolated the areas that I want to shade with this red color and I'm going to make them a compound path. So to do that, select both of the objects, press Command or Control 8. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create two paths. I'm gonna make sure these paths are long enough to cover the entire width of the area that we're applying this to and make the second stroke down kind of towards the bottom wherever the end of the shading is going to be. Wherever the beginning of your shading, the darkest point is, you're going to want to make that path the biggest. Next, I'm going to select the blend tool and I'm just going to click on both of these paths one at a time. 
by default, it's going to add a lot of lines in there. So I'm going to double click on the blend tool over here, change it from smooth color to specified steps and change this number down to something lower. I do like how this looks and I'm gonna hit okay. Last step, I'm going to take the area that I'm shading and I'm gonna move it all the way up to the top and we're going to create a clipping mask with our blend object. Do this by selecting that compound path, select the lines below it and press Command 7 or Control 7. This is going to isolate them to that area and you have now shaded your legs with straight lines. It's a lot more situational than our other shading techniques. As you can see, there are some really cool things you can do with the more complex shapes. It's definitely a tool to add to your repertoire. I will go ahead and move him over next to the other one so we can see what it looks like. And there you go. There are three different alternative kind of comic book style shading techniques you can do all within Illustrator. No plugins or textures required. So let me know what you think. Let me know if this was helpful and you'll be able to use these techniques in future designs of yours within Illustrator. If you like what you see and want some more art related videos, tips, all that fun stuff, be sure to stick around. And yeah, until next time, bye.